Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of the Poetry Reading by me, Clarence Plank, the Shoebox Poet, and I'm reading my book, Finding Peace Within the Storm. So there's a lot of things that have changed since uh, we have last uh, done a reading together, so I will share those inf that information at the end of this, uh, this video, so hopefully you will uh, stick around to be listening. This first poem I'm going to read is called Everything. You're everything to me. And what can I do? And you and God, you're the one. Why does this hurt so much? My heart was broken because I was hoping everything feels lost to me. Why must I be tortured? I am afraid to face her because my heart will fall. And this is basically a poem I wrote when I was day studying in the church uh, years ago. And... So many different times that there was somebody I liked and I wanted to get to know, you know, on a level where we could start dating or doing stuff and it was just kind of a weird situation back then. And there were just so many things against me in trying to date someone because, you know, then again, somebody, you know, this is not really just like somebody, you know, wants to get to know you too. But, you know, it, it happens that way. And then when you find out that the other person likes somebody else and they're talking about, you know, dating them and then they're asking you for advice again, like, what the hell? So, this next one's called, Who Am I? Who am I and who are you? I said to myself every time I looked into the mirror. I see myself staring back, picking apart the pieces of myself, wondering, who am I? I can pull myself apart piece by piece starting with my father and then with my mother, leaving nothing but myself, an empty shell of a man, a child peering out of the darkness. Who am I? I stare perplexed at my form, watching the face grow older, while seeing through these eyes, aging eyes. I often wonder, is there something, some, something, something wrong with me? Then again, what if there's nothing wrong with me? What if I am who I am? Because made, God made me special. He made me into the person that could have been so many things and done so many wrong things. He took me by the hand and walked with me out of the darkness. And I know that sometimes in our walk, he carried me. Even when I couldn't find the strength to crawl. There is a life for me somewhere. But wouldn't that help me to know who I am? Then again, could it help me to know who you are? And this is a question I was, you know, posing myself. I was looking in the mirror and, you know, just asking different things. Um, but looking at the perspective of, of, of someone growing older and then seeing the child you once were in the mirror, but also the man you are or the person you are today. And wondering how the two can connect more deeply and then going into your regular own life. So this next one is called Eyes. When I look into her eyes, I've never felt so strong and so weak. I've never seen myself in your eyes. I've seen myself in your eyes as the man you want me to be. And no matter what I feel, can I be the man you need to guide you and hold, hold you when you feel weak? And this poem is, uh, was inspired by the uh, Spider-Man, the first movie, where Peter was talking about Mary Jane and how he felt about her. And how inspired he was by her. Or in that little thing he said about her. There's also another poem in here about what Aunt May said to him. About heroes. I think that was in the second movie. I'm not really sure. This next one's called Fade. I can fade and run away just to hide from all my pain. It hurts to be alone and nothing can stop the pain. And it does hurt to be alone. That's why I used to, you know, I used to think about it when I was younger. It hurts so much to be alone. But then as you go along, plus also having a pandemic you know, going on, and uh, realizing that sometimes it's better to be by yourself than to be with other people, you know, be around, surrounded by other people, and still feel alone. Oh. This one's going when all was lost. 
I try so hard to make things happen and watch it crumble. Watch it all fall down around me. It was love all I wanted and all I wanted to know and feel and touch. Hold in these hands and felt it slip away. Slip away into nothing, into madness, into loneliness. And I lost everything just to hear you say my name. And I found myself weeping, crying tears I've cried once before. Maybe I wasted it all, wasted all my time, searching for an illusion, wanting to be in love with a ghost. In love with someone, someone that doesn't exist in the world. And that is my failure. That is why I'm dying, dying to be in love. And you know, you, as, you, as you go along in life, and you want to be loved, and then you realize you are loved by people in so many different ways, even though they don't really reflect that love on you or show you that love. It's kind of weird. But, you know, for what I was writing this, I was trying to understand what love means. And it took a while for me to learn what love means. And I still, you know I mean, I have an understanding or a grasp of it. But it's not the same. What is this feeling? Is this one's first poem called? Deep within my soul, I feel like I'm dying. Was that really me? The one with the anger? There was no emotion to it. I just let go and released my fury. Is this the reason why? The reason why I'm alone? I don't know what to say. That there's a demon within me which can never be tamed. And I dare, uh, hardly dare to release it. Why must I be the, why would this be my burden? Fury and desire, wrath and lust. Why should this be my pain? And there was a time when I was younger, uh, when I was writing this poem, and says I was, I had anger. I was angry about different things. And uh, I got frustrated. And, and sometimes it would reflect out in my, in my relationships with people. And it, it was really a bad time for me. Um, fury and desire, wrath and lust. I mean, both, you know, both goes, you know, it's just like, mm, kind of thing. And then you start to calm down and you, and you get older and looking at, you know, you know, wasting your, you know, you shouldn't be wasting your energy and you're putting energy into things that really don't serve you. And that's how I kind of felt with things. So this would be the last poem we read. And it's called, What is Love? How can this be a feeling? What is love? I've asked myself at least a thousand times over and over and nothing seems to be the answer. Why do I feel empty and everything's out of place in my life, no matter how hard I try? I seem to lose and still find, my, find me asking, what is love? What is love? You know, just... I mean, you, you really wonder, and that's the thing, basically, what is love? And it's like, because when you're younger, you look and you kind of associate love with sex. And as you get older, you kind of figure out, says, oh, you know, that's not love, that's more, that's more something else. Uh, where you applying that, term, that terminology of love to something else when it shouldn't be that way. But it happens. But I created a new Instagram for my children's books facility for my children's books to separate that to keep it from my poetry. So it's Arthur underscore Clarence underscore Plank over on Instagram. So you want to find that to be able to follow me for my children's books. I'm hoping to be able to add more content to it uh, when I get a chance and being able to share and connect with other uh, children's book authors and stuff. Hopefully over there to be able to ex expand my reach and everything. It's just starting out. So if you got a, a, a thing from me, that was me. If not, then you know, but definitely ask and reach out if you're not sure. Uh, I would definitely be able to let you know. Uh, check out my friends in the uh, in this post. Um, the Chronicles of the Bookshop has another uh, podcast up. Definitely check that out for this fine bookshop. Uh, my friend uh, Dwight Kirk and his uh, solo double sports over on YouTube. My friends uh, Aria and uh, in Alberta in their Ricky sessions. My friend Jimmy Jinx Portraits who does these wonderful drawings here so if you want any tv series or even if you want a family portrait she can do that for you just reach out to her for commission she does those uh find my books over on amazon there's a link tree in the in this in the post here 
uh, to be able to go there and find the book that you want, or even this book here. And uh, my friend Tracy on Facebook here, her links in there where you can. She's a, a wonderful, talented uh, makeup artist. So definitely check out her stuff and the things that she does. And reach out to her about some makeup tips for uh, different ways. If you live near her, to be able to um, have her to be a part, of, you know, to be a part of anything that you do, uh, whether it be theater or something special. Let's see, is there anybody else that I can think of that, um, oh yeah, the Cats in the Fire podcast by Sarah Aikenhead, Sherry Aikenhead, and Bill Elmer Miller, the Cats in the Fire podcast over on uh, Spotify, iTunes, and everything, uh, on Facebook. Um, definitely check out their stories, or their, their podcasts, and special, especially coming up on uh, September 30th. Um, and the universe said, "Hold my beer." It turns one year one year old. Uh, September second, words for a muse, turns four. So we definitely got those book birthdays coming up. So definitely check out those books. They have all been updated. So definitely uh, go on on it. So I will see you all next weekend. Have a good one. Take care of yourself. Don't do anything I want to do.